Hello Absurda fans and welcome to Perry Plays Narcissu. Now, I don't really know much about this game. Like, I can admit that freely to you right now. But I'm intrigued. I found it on Steam during the sale. I think it might have even be free. I think it might still be free. So if you like what you see, go pick it up. But I know very little about this game other than it is super heavy on the feels. Super duper feelsy. So I don't know much other than that. I don't even know if it's got voice acting or anything. I'm, I'm all set up to... Uh, to give it my best in the in the narration department but we will see we will see i know that it's got quite a sad story just from the little synopsis that i did read so take from that what you will are you ready for super anime bullshit with super duper feels i'm going to have a quick drink before we start Hmm. Right. I think we just have to dive in. Okay. Ooh. So, what do I want? Do I want Narcissu or Narcissu side second? I assume we want the first one. So, let's let's go with that. Um, right, translation. I guess this one? I don't rightly know. Oh, you get to choose whether it's voiced or unvoiced. Uh, well, let's not beat around the bush. I'm not the best voice actor. In fact, I would go as far to say that I'm not a voice actor at all, ever. So, <laughs> let's try voiced. Why not? Ooh. Oh. Oh right, okay, it's uh it's it's in Japanese. Um tell you what, let's see if we can just change the configuration. Ah, voice volume. Can Okay, we'll just uh we'll just make that nice and quiet so that Right. Because it's just gonna get confusing if I start talking over Japanese voices. So have another drink. Hmm. Right. And for some reason it has autoplay on, so that's not great. Subtitles are on, footnotes, whatever they are, are on. Let's slow down the autoplay. And why don't we go straight back into it? Okay, so we've already started off with suicide statistics. That's, that's wonderful. So, spring 1996, Setsumi. True, I wasn't very healthy ever since I was a child. Even so, I attended elementary school like all the others, and during summer breaks I often played until I was utterly tanned. June, shortly after my entry into middle school. The day after I'd ordered a swimsuit for use the next month. My first hospitalization. On a day just before the first cement. Se bleh, we're off to a good start, okay. I gotta, gotta get in the zone, this is serious. On a day just before the first semester midterms. On a day when the first drops of rain were so cruelly cold. Falling from amidst the pure white of the overcast sky. Of course. The first time it happened, all my classmates came to visit me almost every day, and when I was released, they even came to my house on weekends to play. But that was only the first time around. Autumn into winter, winter into spring, a vicious cycle. Hospitalization, release, clinics, and hospitalization again. And before I knew it, even the classmates I once called friends turned into acquaintances, and then into strangers. As if with every changing of seasons, I was being erased from their collective memory. 
It seems that to all those normal people, my very existence was an unpleasant fact. And so it looks like I've been erased. I'd spent so many seasons, so many white, overcast skies without the want or need to converse with anybody. For that matter, my English textbook never changed from that of a first middle school student before the first midterms. That is where my time seems to come to an end. Early summer, 2004. Eight years later? Oh, snap. God, we... Don't mess around, they just go straight in with the gut punch. Summer. Flowing sweat. The gigantic electronic scoreboard in the driver's license examination facility. Lit all up at once, my eyes and everyone else's looked for our respective numbers. 237. 237. And of some eight columns of lit text, sure enough, my examination number was shining in the midst. Clickety-clack. Ah, that's a, that's, that, that would be a train sound effect. A nearly empty train car, perhaps thanks to the beautiful afternoon. Almost alone in that train car, I was heading back home from the examination hall. My left hand held a new traffic regulations handbook, and my breast pocket held my brand new driver's license. So now I've got a license as well. I muttered somewhat happily, but there were no strong feelings behind it. I never particularly wanted to drive a car, I never particularly had any motive for it. It was just that my colleagues and the Technical Institute both recommended that I at least get a driver's license. That night. When I told my parents that I'd gotten my license, they merely replied with an I see. And when I asked if I could borrow the car just for a test run, they instantly and curtly said just one thing. No. While I didn't really want to drive the car or anything, the response was all too expected. Those were my parents for you. The next day, I awoke with chest pain and went to the hospital. Sickness and I generally had nothing to do with each other, which is why I found the ER room, ER waiting room to be utterly boring. And just when I thought they were through examining me, they ordered an x-ray and some blood tests, and then they left. And again, I was left waiting for a long, long time. I'd already polished off three volumes of Shonen Jump, and was just about to start on a fourth when... They admitted me to the hospital right then and there. And it seemed that my new license, which still lay snugly in my breast pocket, would have to wait a long time for its turn to come. Wow. So we got two people. I assume this is two people. So we got that girl, unless that was that girl eight years later who's doing driving tests? I, I'm not entirely sure. Let's, let's see, let's see. Protagonist Autumn 2004. Right around when the all-too-noisy cicadas had finally gone silent, I once again found myself in the hospital, as per usual. Of course, it wasn't as if I'd been there the entire time. I came and went, came and went. A futile cycle. My first surgery was a month before. After that, I started doing the five-minute commute to and from the hospital by moped. And from then on, I was hospitalised, decharged, ordered to clinic, and hospitalised again and again and again, while I still had no clue what PET or ERESA stood for. In no time at all, several months had already passed. As my appetite decreased, my medications increased. I could feel my own physical strength atrophying away. I kept imagining that my legs were getting thinner, but the needle of the weight scale rudely informed me, it's not just your imagination. And yet, I kept looking on at myself with detached interest, as if it were happening to somebody else entirely, as if I were looking at a scene on TV or the like. 
My mind could not grasp what had so suddenly happened to my body. Nothing within me was telling me that this was real at all. And that's why, even though it was all happening to me, I kept looking on as if it were happening to someone far away. A day of winter. Around when the Christmas trees had vanished from the streets. I was discharged home as a kind of year's end treat. It seemed like an exercise in total transience. But still, it made me slightly happy. I travelled back to a home I'd not seen in a long time in the midst of a freezing rain. Strangely enough, my entire family was there. <clears throat> it's drink time, just dropped my coaster. Ah, right. My parents, who had never so much as talked to me, came out to meet me with, if with terribly stilted smiles and my little sister, with whom I'd never had a pleasant word, had made my favourite cream stew and fried shrimp just for me. They made me sit at the table, they peeled tangerines for me, they were cruelly kind. It was an impressive display. At this point, a little thought occurred to me. About my new driver's licence which was still stuffed away in my pocket. Okay, I think this is the same person. Okay, I think we've we've got that down. But why would you not... After... Like, this is months. Why would you not have taken that out at some point? Have you just not changed? I'm sure they change you even if you go to the hospital. Well, you've got to at least wash your... Uh, anyway. That perhaps things would end for the license without it ever having known any use. Oh my god. God. 